What's the one thing that any one of us could do to potentially save someone's life? Learn how to perform CPR. Yesterday I presented the case of a 65 year old man who was eating dinner with his family and he had the sudden onset of chest pain, clutched his chest and then became unresponsive. His family called 911 and EMS showed up within five minutes to begin CPR. He was taken to the local hospital was intubated upon arrival and was found to be having an active heart attack and was taken to the cardiac cath lab in which he underwent an angioplasty. That's essentially a procedure where we open up a blocked artery in the heart. After he got to the intensive care unit after the angioplasty, he underwent a CT scan of his brain that showed these findings. This patient suffered an anoxic brain injury due to the delay of starting CPR immediately. So let's talk about this very important topic. See, the heart pumps blood to all parts of our body, including our brain. It's delivering oxygen and nutrients to critical parts of our body. If the heart stops beating, like in cardiac arrest, there will be no blood flow or oxygen delivered to our brain. And remember that time is brain, so the longer our brain goes without oxygen, the more likely that there's gonna be irreversible brain damage. In an emergency situation like this, Time is extremely critical. So when the family noticed that the patient became unresponsive, they did immediately call 911. But that duration of time to pick up the phone, relay the story to the 911 dispatchers, and then for the dispatchers to relay EMS, and then EMS coming to the house will take a significant amount of time. And in most cases, by the time EMS arrives, it's already too late. We can definitely restart someone's heart, but we cannot undo brain damage that comes along with the lack of oxygen. By starting CPR immediately, as soon as the patient becomes unresponsive, will increase survival two to three times. What we see on this patient's CAT scan is signs of an anoxic brain injury. This is also called an hypoxic ischemic brain injury. If we compare his CT scan, to a normal CT scan of the brain, what you will see is a loss of gray-white junction. On this normal CT scan, you'll see darker parts of the brain and lighter gray parts of the brain, and that defines the gray and white matter structures of the brain. Loss of gray-white junction findings on a CT scan can indicate a major problem. What we also see on this CT scan is in a normal CT, you will see the natural folds of the brain, and on this CT scan, you do not see that. That's a sign of brain swelling, which is indicative of an anoxic injury. Now, I wanna point out that this is not exclusive to just patients that have heart attacks. This happens across the board in any patient that loses their airway, stops breathing, or their heart stops beating. That can be in cases of drowning, drug overdose, carbon monoxide poisoning, even in cases like airway compromise, such as choking, asphyxia, or even hanging. The underlying cause is a lack of oxygen to the brain for a duration of time that causes brain damage. Restoration of blood flow and oxygenation of the brain in an, a fast fashion is critical. In one year, 436,000 Americans will die of a heart attack. And more than 350,000 cardiac arrests will happen outside of the hospital. Bystander CPR will improve survival. And unfortunately, statistics show that only 40% of patients that have cardiac arrest will have bystander CPR before professionals arrive. That means 60% of people could potentially have a completely different outcome if someone started CPR. Do you know CPR? The basic steps of CPR is that as soon as someone becomes unresponsive, call 911 or have someone call 911 for you. Lay the person on their back and open their airway and check their breathing. And if they are not breathing, start CPR immediately. That means initiating chest compressions followed by rescue breaths. And for the purpose of this video, I won't go through the steps of CPR because people need to be trained on how to do CPR correctly. For anyone that does not know how to do CPR, I suggest that you go to the American Red Cross website where you can get online training. That means any of you guys out there. Back to our patient. He underwent an angioplasty to open up the blood supply to the blocked artery in his heart, but unfortunately it was too late for his brain. The CT scan showed a diffuse anoxic brain injury. He did undergo immediate therapeutic hypothermia, which is a standard of care for patients that are comatose after suffering a cardiac arrest. This means we cool the body to 32 to 34 degrees Celsius 
for at least 24 hours. Our body's natural temperature is around 38 degrees Celsius. So by cooling our body temperature, we reduce the metabolism of the brain and the oxygen consumption of the brain by a significant amount. By reducing those needs to the brain, it can potentially help recovery. It's neuroprotective by stabilizing the blood-brain barrier and reducing swelling of the brain. Prognosis in a patient with an anoxic injury after cardiac arrest is extremely important to discuss. There are some scales that we can utilize to help us with those prognostic indicators and have those discussions with the family. Ultimately, these are very, very hard discussions to have. In our patient's case, he had extensive damage to his brain and was not showing any signs of neurological recovery. After having frank and open discussions with the patient's family, they made the difficult decision to withdraw care. Despite his heart recovering well from the heart attack, his brain never recovered. And the most difficult thing about this whole case is that it could have had a completely different path of CPR was started immediately. So please, if you don't know CPR, go to the American Red Cross website, sign up for a class. You can do it online or in person and help save someone's life. Even though this was not the outcome that any of us wanted, we delivered compassionate care. I really hope you guys learned something this week. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.